Hi everyone, now uh, this is a requested fly, uh, I got basically asked if I could tie a red arrow. Now I've tied them many a time and I've fished them, it's a great fly so it's ideal because I'm going to be fishing up the lochs a wee bit. So this is one of the top flies you should have in your box. Now the gentleman fishes this in the top dropper so you can see I've actually made it quite basically hairy as you want to call it, it's quite a loose dubbing on it. Uh, it's a nice dressing. Now I'll put a picture up of the actual original dressing that uh, from the Trout and Salmon Flies of Ireland by Peter O'Reilly and you can see it and a wee bit of history of it below and so just pause it and read it. But anyway I'm going to be tying it. Hook choice is up to yourself. I'm using a barbless hook from Full and Mill, this one. Competition heavyweight, size 12. 12 and 14s are good for up the lock. Uh, you could use it bigger, smaller, uh, if you want, it's up to yourself. Uh, it'd be good for sea trout, this, this fly, uh, and even salmon. I'm sure you could catch a salmon on this, no problem. Now, black thread, uni, 8 -o. Now, I have waxed it. You want to layer a thread down the shank. Remove the waist as you get to the point where it just, before it goes round the bend, it's going to do another turn here. Uh, so, just basically where you'd be in line with the barb if it was on the hook. Now for the the tail, I'm actually going to be using uh, enormous natural. Now this 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 collar was quite weak in colour, so what I normally do is boost it. Now I dyed this one sunburst, uh, and it lifted the orange. It made it really nice, nice and bright. So I'm um, just show you a feather here. There's one. Now I'm using this. Now you could use a natural if you want. That is the original dressing. Now what I do is I hold the tips of the fibre. Come in with the points of the scissors, trim away and take away the main feather, leaving the cut ends. Tail length, round about the, the shank or the body length, tie that on top. Just a couple of turns to hold. Check my length, that's fine. Trim. The rib of the fly can be silver wire, tinsel, oval tinsel. Oval. Uh, you could use what you like. I'm using a small tinsel and silver obviously. Now I'm just going to quickly run my thread up and back down. Just to tie in these loose ends here and make sure it's secure. Now for the bodies normally it, it was seals for originally used. Now I'm going to be using a, a dubbing from Fully Mill. This is called Voodoo Streamer Dub. Now it is quite a long fibre, it's a blended dubbing. It's got a bit of flash in it. Now obviously this one's called Bleeding Red because of the flash. And we've got this one here, it's called Jet Black in UV. Uh, again, it's quite, as I say, quite a coarse. Now, there it's there, you can see there's the red, it's putting a shine through it. You don't need much. I'm going to put it on reasonably loose, so you may see the, the thread through it, but it should be okay. It's going to lightly dub it on. Slide it up. And then half the body, the red dubbing. Watch your tail, you don't catch it. It's quite a tail of you about there. Just sometimes the, the, the fibre will catch your tail in the way, first turn especially. See what that's like? Yeah, I'm just going to stop it there. Oops. Trim away. As I say, it's quite a long fibre. It's not originally it's not meant for this type of fly, really, because of the long fibre, but it still works. We've got the, the black with the UV. Again, you don't need too much, just lightly dub it on. I say I'm putting it on reasonably loose. So, just work your way up. Just tighten when you need to. Now, when you get to this point, anything going forward, just draw it back with your fingers. And give yourself a good couple of mil for your hackle and your I've got a bit of jungle cock in there as well. You see it is quite loose but it will pull together once we rub it, so but at least five times. Let's get to this point here again, stroke back any fibre that wants to go forward with your fingers. Bring up that last half turn, secure in your tinsel. Draw away. And make sure you watch your thread. See what the body's like. Now I'm going to bring out some of the dubbing. 
all the way around. Just watch your thread. If you're going to put this in the top dropper, you, it's best to sort of rough it up. Uh, it's a good point fly, it's a good fly anywhere in the cast, I could put it, in, if you're fishing three flies it could be top, middle and the point, it's up to yourself. I'm happy with that. Now I'm using a dyed black, this is just a Indian neck, hen neck and black. So, dyeing it in by the tip. There's the tip there, I'm just going to push it turns down, fold it back. Sometimes I usually trim it and then just try it tight in, but you can do that, do that with it. And use my hackle pliers. Now the reason tying in hen normally is traditionally tied in by the tip, uh, but it's, in this case as well, it's the best fibre and it's the thinnest uh, part of the stem as well. You just do a turn front of each other, just do enough hackle. Once you're happy, then you can come across your thread. A nice bend into the stem, make sure it's secure. Now you could trim that away, or if you want to, you can. You can. I usually throw it back. Turns the thread in there, keeping the thread tight. I can then break off the hackle. And there you go. That gives you a nice, nice hackle. Now, jungle cock. Get some split jungle cock eyes here. There's one of a nice split down the centre. It's just the, in a jungle coat cape, you'll always get split eyes. So if you've got a split eye, use them up. So you tie this on the top and onto the black area. Now I'm just going to encourage it. It's came round a wee bit, so I'm going to go back. Sometimes it ties. Oops, sorry, it ties in better when it's the second time. That's the way I want it, just like that. So I'm tying in the black area and then I'm going to fold this back. Just tidy the head area up. You can, if we can, I like to break off these. This. Just wiggle it. If it's not going to do it, like it's not going to do it. Uh, and then I've got to trim it away. I, I do prefer to break it. If it's going to pull the feather, just trim it. Yeah. Make sure you've got a reasonable head. They say, but if you break it off, you do get a neater cut. So, cut finish, trim. And then there we are. It's getting nice enough. The flies, I say, you want it quite rough if you're going to put it in the top dropper. So, it's going to rough up a wee bit more. Just drawing back the fibres here, there's a couple very long, so just trim them. And then all we have to do is varnish. A couple of coats usually does it. If you want a nice bright head, but a single coat will finish it off. Hold your foot finish, no problem. Just all the way around. Oops. A drop coming down the brush there. I just thinned the, uh, the varnish out so it's quite runny. So there we are. And that's the red arrow. Nice patterns, I say, nice traditional styled, uh, it's a well, wet fly. So there we go. Uh, so hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.